Well, good morning, everyone. How are we all doing? Uh, what's up, YouTubers, should I say? I keep forgetting to say that, and now we're back in the swing of it. Uh, I'm on the way to the woods. I'm in the woods, as you can probably tell. Uh, other than the plane that's just gone over, all I've heard this morning is birds, the deer, and in fact, I did see a deer walking just around, just across that road. Uh, obviously, too slow, but there you go. It was nice to witness in my eyes. That's a shame I didn't get to show you guys, but there you go. Yeah, so I am a sucker for these avenue shots because they just there's so much character to them. There's so many layers. There's so many things. You can include or not include and just pick certain areas uh, with a long lens. Or what I tend to do is sit back like I am now and you can see how it's very undulated. There's a big distance between where I am and the horizon. The vanishing point way down, way down there. And I like sitting back with a long lens and sort of compressing the scene um, and it really squats that mist in as well. Uh, gives you lots more um, options when you go into Photoshop. Uh, to, to edit this image, I can edit it exactly how I want. Uh, which will probably just enhance exactly what is there really. I'm not really sure if you can see now. But the mist has definitely dissipated us slightly. Typically there's a car coming. Obviously I'm shooting in the road, so you're going to get cars, <laughs> even though it is probably still 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, this is a very popular woods for photographers. And there's another car. Right, I'm going to leave it here, I'll meet you in the woods, because, uh, oh no, he's going the way. We're safe, we're safe, he's going the other way. Yeah, so what I was saying is that these shots are really powerful. They offer a lot of options, although they're obvious, um, especially for those people that are starting out. If you're trying to get used to depth of field, like with a long lens, or any, any lens for that matter, but especially long lens, if you're trying to get used to depth of field and how it works, uh, if you want to get used to how your camera focuses, um, where the sweet spots are in your camera lens, for instance, um, a shot like this is is always quite advantageous because it's offering so much uh, in terms of composition and sky's the limit with pro pro processing depending on what conditions you get. Uh, also, another one is because you've got such a, a vast distance from here to there. And this particular woods is quite undulated. You always get mist and fog and atmosphere down in, in the horizon on them on these sort of avenue shots, so you can create a nice story into which leads into the mist. Wow. What a morning. Um, we have jumped forward a little bit from where you first see me uh, because just look at the conditions. And they are hanging around actually, which is nice. Um, I really just sort this out. I'm shooting on, you're shooting the video on the 20mm Prime because I want the 24 to 70 for this shot. So I think I. I think I need to swap this 20, 20 more prime out for the 16 to 35. I need to buy 16 to 35 again. 
which is annoying because I sold one uh, <laughs> to fund 100 or 400, blah, blah, blah. long story short. Yeah, absolutely stunning conditions. So, what drew me to the shop was the shape of these trees, and there's three of them. Now, the main thing that I wanted to achieve was separation, so I didn't want any of these trees interlocking with any one of the, um, with that one or that one, you know, with each other. Um, <clears throat> so that got me to my position where I am now. Then I thought, right, I want to eliminate as much sky as possible, because if I just shoot you up here, as nice as that looks, and you can see me filming, <laughs> as nice as that looks, I didn't want too many highlights. I don't mind a few, but I didn't want too many, which then I sort of settled on the 16 by 9 and I had it about here. Didn't really like this little spot. I don't mind some speckled highlights, but just this one particular spot was just I find it really distracting. So I've even got to zoom in a touch and just find the sweet spot, which I think was about there. Now, the other thing I wanted to include really was some more on the left here because if I just pan around. There's a lovely tree here. Some lovely colours and the light, the way the light hits the warmer tones and the background is in there, it's all cool and um, like a blue tinge to it and you'll notice that from the edit. It's kind of hard to show you here because you're just shooting video but so, but obviously there's a fence here. Um, so this is a classic example of not wanting Except in the fact you have to eliminate things. You can't always get everything in one shot, one frame, and make everything work cohesively. So as nice as that tree is on the left here, I just can't include it. So what I've settled on is a compromise, is I've just included as much of it as I can. So you're talking around there. And that just about sorts this side out because this is and this is a light that I wanted to catch. I love the fact that the light is hitting this side. And I always talk about um, cool and warm tones. Um, there is a chap on Instagram. I'll put his Instagram link up on the screen now so you can see. Uh, he's an amazing woodland photographer, and he the way he processes cooler and warmer tones and in the same image to create depth, to create a story and layers is absolutely perfect so that's the feeling I've got with this image here so you've got them lovely warm tones coming in from the top left hand corner and just bathing these the lefts of these trees um, which I really really like um, and then your cooler like I said the cooler tones in the background which will really help add that layer and depth to the image and then <laughs> This, there's another there's another problem. I like this tree here, and there isn't any real way of excluding that tree and not sacrificing compositionally this area here. Um, I can't really show you a crop, but I can crop it off here later, which I might do like a square crop. I might show you a square a square crop. So you can see kind of what I'm saying. It might work, it might not. So what I've decided to do is include this gorgeous tree on the left here. So now I have a tussle between this tree and giving it room and separation and the area that it deserves, and the same this side. And I can't go much wider because I'm introducing too much sky. So what do you do? Again, it's just a happy medium. So somewhere like that, and I think I may have given the right tree a touch more. Or something like that. So that's that's my final shot, that's my thought process. Um, so first of all, it was the shape of the tree that drew me to this scene. Then that dictated where, where my tripod landed. Um, after I walked around, I. I knew that I didn't want them trees overlapping, intersecting each other. And then from there, 
then we build the story of the image where what do I want to include what do I want to exclude how much sky do I want um, where's the light coming from as well um, so I hope I've explained that in a quite a, <laughs> a lengthy way uh, so yeah just a beautiful morning um, I would like to get another one or two more shots if I can but who knows So I've literally moved <laughs> 10 foot from these midges are doing my absolute nightmare. Nightmare? Doing, these midges are doing my nut in. Yeah, I've moved like 10 foot. Um, dap the uh, tripod over the fence slightly and I'm uh, risking the gut for the video. <laughs> but. The light is just absolutely incredible. I've gone for like a, a square crop. Um, hang on, I'll show you. A four by three, not a square, sorry. Just because I don't want too much of this. So I'm looking at the side screen, so I know what I'm pointing at. I don't want too much of this sky in. Um, but the way the light is just sort of bleeding down. And again, we've got warm, cool tones. Uh, a nice little path which leads you in and that's the reason why I'm using like a, a more of a like I said not a square crop a 4x3 four by, four by I'm um, using a too wide a scene the trees on the left sort of run you off off the left hand side of the frame where I don't want that I want your eye to be sort of contained and eventually end off down in the distance I don't want it to veer off to the left um, very chaotic but as you know, I love chaotic, uh, chaotic scenes. I love trying to uh, simplify them and make them work. Um, I think that's what helps st helps me stand out uh, as an individual. Um, but yeah, it's all about that light, all about that atmosphere, that mist, and that sort of cooler background with warm light bleeding in. Very impulsive, you've got to act on instinct, act on the light. Um, this is not a composition that works without that light. Well, the composition, it works, but the, the, the picture, the image doesn't work without that light. Um, and obviously a little bit of atmosphere helps. That was Bannock, and it's fogging in again. <laughs> uh, it's just, I don't think I've ever known conditions like this, where it fogs in and comes in and out, where the light is so good. Normally when you get light like this, like quite harsh light above, obviously it burns all the fog and the atmosphere away pretty sharpish. Hence why it was quite hectic for me earlier. But as you can see behind me, not sure if you can see there's still a lot of atmosphere going behind me where I was just shooting the tree over the barbed wire fence that's all fogged in again so this video could be half an hour long uh, which I don't really want it to be so I think I'm gonna end it there uh, I hope you enjoyed the video uh, I really enjoyed filming this video 
and I think I got some keepers. Um, yeah, what more to say other than I really hope you'll enjoy this video again. Please like, share and subscribe and hit that thumbs up button because there's nothing worse than putting videos up and nobody watches them so them thumbs up and if you have enjoyed please consider subscribing and supporting the channel help us grow together and push on into the into the horizon right I'm gonna head off oh, I keep looking over there because it just looks so good <laughs> I'm gonna head off uh, and I uh, wish you a happy whenever you're watching this and I'll see you next week ciao bye for now Thank you.